Good morning. What a timely movie that we saw last night. I don't think that a year ago, two years ago, yes, it was needed, but I think it's incredibly important today. You know, we see, those that love Israel see the trends, and we see what's taking place all through our nation. We see what's taking place on our campuses. And um, I have to say, with the younger generation, I'm very, very concerned. Um, we are seeing the influences of Islamic studies. We are seeing professors who are um, coming against Israel in such a way, and the students, if they don't know the facts versus the myths, it's so easy for them to be gullible in this area. You know, I was looking at something where it said, you know, we raise our children, we teach them God's ways, we send them off, and then they go to universities and they start saying, hmm, questioning what mom and dad taught them, questioning what values they have. And unless they know the facts, unless they know the word, people are being duped in so many ways. Israel Indivisible is a credibly important time for us to be able to see this movie here. I'm so thankful that God brought me and Lori together. You know, over the years, first of all, there's so many Christian radio stations, television station programmers that in their love for Israel, it's so important for them to be able to bring those things as well as the things we stand for when it comes to marriage and to life. Israel is, is much, if not more, the apple of God's eye. Right. And right now around the world, we're seeing <laughs> that eye being provoked and seeing it being poked. And as believers, you know, we heard God will judge the nations. How much more <laughs> will God judge us as a people who have taken his word and taken him in our hearts, and then we just completely treat our brothers poorly. We try to put ourselves in a place of pride that we're better than them. Um, it is a very interesting time we live in, and I think that God is raising up men and women. You know, Lori, you are an Esther in this hour, and men esters, women. God is not a respecter of male or female. He's just looking for willing vessels who will stand for those truths that bring about um, even people's salvation. Um, you know, a lot of the work we do, we just met with the Minister of Tourism, and we talked about some things that are of concern to us as New Mexicans in New Mexico. And, you know, I told him there's this awakening in the Latino community. <coughs> New, you know, the, the U.S. has incredible demographics of the Latino groups coming in, and they need to be educated. The young people are our other place where they need to be educated. And honestly, we really should be teaching our kids these things when they're in our homes, when they're young, and when they're in high school, so that when they go to college, they can become advocates, and they could be the people that know what's going on, and it, 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 it will be, um, it, it's imperative to do that. Um, in some of the work that we've done over the years, being able to educate people is critically important. Um, Lori does focus on Israel. We do some programs about Israel, or when we bring people in, we let them talk about that. It's interesting to see that even as Christians, I, I we, we just celebrated a landmark in our ministry this year, and I really felt like this year, God's saying for us to understand the word of God so that we are not deceived, and we have to understand the facts and the myths concerning Israel. And I think that being able to get this picture out to people throughout this nation can kind of dispel or change the way maybe God looks at this nation. Um, we saw with 9-11 what took place. We saw what's happened in different areas. And we don't hear an outcry from the enemies of Israel, or we don't even hear an outcry from moderate Muslims saying that this is wrong. And as a nation, we have to ask ourselves why this is happening. And so I want to challenge, again, broadcasters to really see how you can work together to, yes, propagate the truth, but how can we bring the information that's being um, produced and how can we work together to lock arms so that people really know what's taking place? 
um, Pastor Mark Biltz and me were at some leadership meetings a couple of weeks ago, and I thought about something he said I, uh, about Genesis 12, 3, 4, and 5. You know, it's one of those things that we all think about. I will bless those who bless thee, and I will curse those who curse thee. Is the reason we support Israel it's because we just want God's blessings, or is it because we're afraid that he's going to curse us? Instead, shouldn't it be, wow, God loves Israel that much that he wants us to love and to stand and to pray, and then we just get blessed <laughs> and we won't be cursed? But I'll go much further. If we're propagating the gospel and we don't understand our love for Israel, you know, we talk about veils that both Gentile and Jew have, okay? We don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. But I have, really, it's just a, a belief in my heart that if we don't understand the importance of Israel, there's a veil here. And if you leave that there, then as you're speaking truth, you're not seeing everything completely clear. Pretty soon, you're going to have another veil and another veil. And pretty soon, everything that you stand on and believe in will not be called truth anymore, but it will be a heresy to God. And um, I, as, as, a, as a ministry, I'm looking forward to having Lori's products at our station, not to sell, to have people involved, and to be able to get the information out. I told her last year, and for some reason it did, we didn't mix, I wanted to play some of her uh, movies on the Holocaust. And um, people are hungry for it. When we play those things, people are going, going, oh, I didn't know. You know, I find out in some of our leadership roles that we do as broadcaster or even as an advocate for Israel that most Christians don't know our history. Right. We have no idea why our Jewish brothers and sisters aren't wrapping their arms around us. But you look at our history, and we wouldn't be doing it either. We have under the heart of we're standing for justice in the word, you know, calling Jews Christ killers. How could we even say that? We killed him. He came for every one of us, and he willingly did it. And he came to the lost sheep of Israel first. And because they preserved the word of God over all the years, because of the patriarchs and those that we love, I mean, Christianity would not be even be able to be here today if it wasn't for our Jewish brothers and sisters. And so what an obligation we have now in an hour to stand. When we were meeting with a minister, he was saying, you know, it's not just the Jews anymore who are suffering persecution, but it is the Christians as well. And I will challenge you in this. Psalms 91 says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High is there a condition to God's word? I know that I really believe as we follow his ways, we keep his word, there's protection. And so I want to encourage everyone, and I want to thank Lori and her husband for the incredible work they're doing. And I want to encourage people to, in these days ahead, to truly walk with your brothers and sisters in a way so that God's protection is not just over you, but he can use you. And Lori, thank you for the work you're doing. I just think that just like God says, for such a time as this, he's put us together for such a time as this. And I'm not sure how God will use us together, but I'm, I'm really excited. Thank you. We are going to come, we're going to start concluding our program. And of course, you know that every year, PJTN recognizes a broadcaster who goes above and beyond the call of duty to defend Israel and the media because that's what we're all about. So tonight we're going to give the 2014 Tree of Life Award away. So I would like to invite Miss Annette Garcia to the podium, please, with Sun Broadcasting. Annette, <laughs> let me tell you something about this woman. We are two sisters cut from the same cloth. <laughs> She's Garcia and I'm Cardoza. <laughs> and we also found out we both have Jewish ancestry on, bo on both sides of our family. So, you know, the Lord brought us together and, and Mr. Little had made the, 
recommendation and introduced me to Annette, and I'd heard about her, her father, Blackie Gonzalez. Many of you know uh, Blackie. Um, he passed away in 2008. But this young woman decided to take on her father's legacy and carry it forward. And we all know that Blackie was a huge lover of Israel and the Jewish people. And so Annette has carried that forward. And so, Annette, it is our honor at Proclaiming Justice to the Nations to honor you this year because you have stood, you have gone above and beyond, and you've stood with the Jewish people, not just through the media, but within your community. And so we just want to honor you, we want to bless you, and we want to thank you for all you do and what you will continue to do with this Tree of Life Award. And it says, I'll read it, it says, 2014 Ed McAteer Tree of Life Award presented to Annette Garcia, president of Sun Broadcasting Network, for her commitment to the state of Israel and the Jewish community in the diaspora this February 23rd, 2014. God bless you. Thank you. So you might need some muscles to pick some that muscles up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. It's, you know, it's interesting. We were kind of laughing because uh, Mike Little really was used, I think, of God. It was the timing. And um, from a Years and years ago, you know, our family would come with my dad to NRB, and one of our highlights were coming to the prayer breakfast for Ed McAteer. And um, I don't think that this is by coincidence, but we talk about, you know, tree of life, our family, my mother and father. You know, truly, our family continues to carry on the legacy because my mother and father cared enough to love the God of Israel with all their heart, soul, and strength, and they cared enough to make sure that we love the God of Israel, that we love the things that God loved. And it's an easy thing. This is like being with family. You know, and I, I want to challenge us as broadcasters. You know, we're here at National Religious Broadcasters. You know, in Deuteronomy, it talks about that God gives us wealth to um, um, fulfill his covenant here on earth. And my dad used to say, you know, that's the blessing God gives us. It's that we'll establish his covenant here on earth. And for us in Christian broadcasting, how can we propagate the gospel? And how can we talk about the love of God if we don't stand with Israel? If we don't bring the information, this movie tonight, Israel Indivisible, absolutely needed. The work we all do, first of all, in every single state across this nation, we should have strong communities of Christians who are standing together with Israel. If you're a broadcaster, you should be, people should be, coming to um, Lori and saying, Lori, give us everything you have. Because the truth of the matter is there's so many lies about Israel right now. In New Mexico, New Mexico is a border state. And in New Mexico, we're getting all kinds of things coming into our border. And a lot of that is Islam. And it's affecting not just New Mexico, but our nation. And it's all over. The universities, we work a lot with Kufi and campus. And the universities, there is such a hatred and such a strong, growing presence of anti-Semitism on our universities that years, a couple of years ago, we brought Dennis Prager for a night to honor Israel. And here he was saying, you know, as Jewish people, we always thought it was so important to have our children go to universities and get educated. And now they're going to universities and they're getting lies. And they're learning to hate our own country and hate Israel. So I have a challenge for all the broadcasters, any of them that might be here or those that you might talk to. In this hour, we have been called as Esthers. And if we don't do the work that God's given us to do, it's all right. He'll find someone else. But I choose to take Genesis in 12, 3, 4, 5 that says, he will bless those who bless thee and he will curse those who curse thee. And I want to say this really strong. I don't like that scripture because I think I'm going to get blessed or I'm not afraid of the scripture because I think I might be cursed. But what I see is that God loves Israel so much that it's just what happens. You'll be blessed, and if you come against Israel, you'll be cursed. One day, very soon, every one of us will have to answer for how we stand for Israel. And I'll tell you, I know that me and Lori, we're going to do everything that's required of us. And you know what? Our, our walls in Sun Broadcasting, and I with proclaim justice, and I know there's others, we don't care about our own ministries. We care about doing the work that God's called us to do, and we got to help each other. we got to depend on each other. She and her husband have been gifted 
with bringing the stories and bringing the truth. We've been gifted with a tool where we can send out the information, television and radio. So many of you can do the same thing. And you may not be broadcasters, but you can certainly talk to your senators. You can certainly stand up and build relationships in your Jewish community. Some of our greatest friends, some of my greatest brothers and sisters are those in the Jewish community. And when they're hurting, we're hurting. When they need prayer, we're praying. We celebrate with them, and we learn to work together. Lori, this is, this is beautiful, and I have to say that for, on behalf of our family, this is a tribute to my mom and dad and the work that they did and that my children and my brothers and sisters' children and their children, if God so decides to tarry, that we would continue to propagate the gospel, but along with that, standing with the Jewish people and proclaiming truth in this hour. Thank you.